In this example, we're going to take a look at some characteristics of a quadratic function in vertex form. All right, so remember to be in vertex form, we need to have this f of x equals, and we'll have this leading value, this a, and then we'll have a quantity x minus h, that quantity will be squared, and this uh, square right here is kind of what causes this whole thing to be quadratic, because you'll have the x squared, and then we'll have a plus k. One thing that's really nice about vertex form that standard form doesn't offer us is that simply by looking at a function, we can tell what its vertex is going to be. So when it's in vertex form, the vertex, this ordered pair V, will be given by the ordered pair H, K. All right, that's nice. So we have this H, K right here. And so in this example here, or this video, we're going to look very specifically at this function f of x equals, and we'll have a negative sign out front, and this quantity x minus 4 will be squared minus 2. So it looks like we have x minus 4, and our general uh, formula here is x minus h, so it looks like this h value is actually going to be 4. Okay, well how about this plus k, which kind of follows along on the end? Well, it looks like k is going to be negative 2. Well, if that's the case, our vertex will be given by this ordered pair, h, k, and in our case, 4, negative 2. Okay, so that's the first thing we'll talk about is the vertex of the parabola. And of course, when you graph a quadratic function, it's going to be a parabola. And it's going to be kind of that, kind of that U shape that opens either upward or uh, downward. And so the next thing we'll talk about is the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is going to be, in our case, a vertical line. And it's going to pass through the vertex. And what happens here, this axis of symmetry, we have the two legs of the parabola, and they're kind of mirror images across this axis of symmetry, across this vertical line. And so you'll see it on the left one opening upward, or on the right one opening downward. The two legs, again, kind of symmetric about that line. Nice mirror images. Also, we know that uh, it'll pass through the vertex right here. So in our case, the axis of symmetry, okay, is uh, x equals, and then it's eight, the uh, h value here, so x equals h. So for us, it'll be x equals 4. All righty, so that'll be that uh, vertical line. That's the equation, x equals 4. And so the next thing, let's talk about uh, whether or not the parabola, so the graph of this function, whether it opens upward or downward. Well, how can we tell? So it will open upward if our a value is greater than zero or positive, and it'll open downward if our a value is less than zero or negative. Well, the a value is this kind of this number that's uh, out front here of our squared uh, business, and so it looks like we have just a negative, or in fact a negative one, we could say. So our a value is going to be negative one, so that means the graph of the parabola will open downwards. So it's going to be doing one of these things right here, and we'll have this vertex, and the axis of symmetry will be this x equals 4, and this ordered pair right there will be 4, negative 2. Okay, that kind of sums up everything we know so far about this. Okay, so let's talk about whether the vertex is a minimum of the function or a maximum of the function. Well, here we can see visually that we have the parabola opening downwards. The vertex is going to be a maximum or uh, the, the highest the function ever gets with respect to the y value. So the vertex is a maximum value. All right, and so perhaps let's talk about the domain and range as well. Okay, we'll put the domain there and the range right over here. Okay, so we know that we have our vertex, and I'll just rewrite it here at 4, negative 2, and that'll kind of play a nice part here. So for our domain range and also what we're going to talk about next. Okay, so the domain, remember, for parabolas is all real numbers. So we can just say negative infinity to positive infinity, there's our domain, right? But our range, however, 
uh, is dictated by whether or not our parabola opens upward or downward. And so we can see that it's opening down. So the y values will be going down to infinity. But remember, we do have a maximum y value. It's this y value right here, which is negative 2. Because remember, this is an xy ordered pair. So the maximum value is y equals negative 2. So we can write our range as, well, negative infinity up to negative 2. So the infinities always get parentheses because you can't include, they're not a specific point. However, this negative 2 is a specific point. It's the y value of the vertex. And so we have our range going from negative infinity to negative 2, and the negative 2 is included. All right, the last thing we want to talk about, on what intervals is the graph of our function increasing? And on what intervals is the graph of our function decreasing? Okay, well, we've already decided that this is what our parabola looks like. It's opening downward, which means it's going to be increasing to the left of our vertex and decreasing to the right of our vertex. And that, those values will be with respect to the x value. Okay, so that's going to be that 4. And so we know it's going to be increasing then from negative infinity up to 4. So I can say negative infinity up to 4. And it'll be decreasing then starting at 4 and heading up to positive infinity. So here's kind of the last little pieces we can talk about. All right, so here was our original function. We had f of x equals negative or negative 1. And then we had this quantity x minus 4 squared minus 2. We found the vertex by using this formula here. It's uh, the ordered pair h, k, where the h is this guy and the k is this guy. So it's the horizontal shift and the vertical shift, if you want to talk about it as far as transformations or translations are concerned. We also talked about the axis of symmetry, which is x equals h. We talked about that this example has a parabola that's opening downward because the a value was negative 1 or, you know, less than 0. We know because of that, the vertex is a maximum of the function. And then we can find the domain and range, which we did here. So let's go ahead and end this video by showing you a graph of this function that kind of ties all this information together.